My name is Lynn Kettler and I'm a spoon carver. I usually cut my own wood. For demonstration purposes, I brought this smaller piece of mulberry. So you start out with this, you're gonna split this, this size, probably split it in half. This will split down to beautiful yellow with mulberry. And you quarter it if it's this size or eighth it even. You gotta try to get as many spoons as you can out of each log. So you get it about this size, depending on the spoon. This is gonna be a large spoon, a cooking spoon. Just basically find your center line. Draw your basic design on there that you're gonna work with. This is gonna be a big one, so it's got a big bowl here. For a cooking spoon, generally you want a long handle on a cooking spoon in a large bowl. That's what we're working on today. This right here is a piece of maple, which is really hard when it's dry, really soft when it's wet. Most people work maple wet. I was a carver for a long time. I just carved, uh, I carved gargoyles. I carved large pieces. And I had all these small pieces of wood laying around from my, uh, wood carving days, I thought there's got to be a use for them. Started doing some research and I joined a wood carving guild. And when I joined the guild, you had to do 100 spoons to become a member. So I worked all summer to get my 100 spoons done. So I did every kind of wood I could get, all from my farm. I fell in love with the wood, then I fell in love with the spoons. And I've been doing it ever since. I don't sell them. I barter with them or give them away. <laughs> already starting to take a little bit of shape you can see on this back side of the bowl. Okay, so you can see how we're getting from a log like this, or this, down to somewhat resemblance of a spoon. So this is now ready to be the process of doing this, the bowls. This is how I start my bowl process, is with a mallet and a chisel. You don't have to do it like this, there's lots of ways you can do it. You can use a hook knife. So I'm just going to show you a little bit about these. If you're going to use a hook knife, you go cross grain to start like this. You're going to divide your bowl into quarters. Each quarter is a different direction with the grain. This way, this way, this way, and this way. So this is a slow process, hook knifing. Some people save it to the end to do their finish cuts with it. This is a much faster process. Or you can just take a gouge and do it like this. So you get it gouged out enough to where you can use your hook knife smooth. Everybody's different. Everybody does it a little bit different way. This is your main tool beside your hatchet. This is what you do all your finish work with. It's a Sloyd knife. It's a Swedish knife. Another tool that a lot of people use is a draw knife. It's one of my favorite finishing tools for the handles. It's full energy to me. I can feel the energy from the wood. I can feel the energy from the trees. I always ask their permission before cutting them. Thank them for letting me use them. Even when I'm using the spoons at home, I'm constantly talking to the wood. It becomes part of me. You don't always get permission. There will be trees that just don't want to be cut. I've had that feeling, like, no, okay. This is just finishing up the bowl. I like everything knife finished. I don't like anything sanded. I like the finish that the knife gives. That's a finished spoon finish with walnut oil. You don't need anything fancy, you don't need expensive tools, find yourself a good pocket knife and start at it. Small piece of wood. Don't need anything fancy. This has been a production of West Virginia Public Broadcasting.